Welcome to another episode of Everybody's Got Something. I'm your host, Seth Hoffman. We've got great guests. We've got Joel Greasehopper, the grasshopper, and we're very honored to have Miss Rachel Ross. Let's get into it. Let's have some fun. Glad you're with us. All right. It is a true honor. Uh, we are blessed to have our dear Rachel Ross. Rachel, how are you doing today? I'm doing very good. I'm glad to be here. Thank I you. I am so honored. Um, I know you as a singer, as a performer, but I am so excited just to hear a little bit about your story. Um, I wonder if you could just first tell us, how did music first enter your life? Was it from the time you were young? It was there? Or what Very did... much so. So, um, born and raised in Mexico, Silver City, that's it. Um, my influences are definitely gospel, and my mom is a Sam Cooke fan, a Temptations fan, and my dad was a blues country fan, so a little bit of all of that was kind of in my home, so it's a... And were you singing from as long as you could remember, or were you mostly taking it in in the early years? <laughs> so believe it or not, I was determined to be a Michael Jackson singer. Uh, uh, not necessarily a singer, but one of his backup dancers. I was going to be in the videos. Uh -huh. <laughs> that was my lifelong dream. And then we went to like a vacation Bible school when I was around maybe 10. Uh -huh. And we learned all these cool songs. And so me and my two younger sisters, Adrian and Sarah, we started, uh, <laughs> we started singing and forcing my mom to watch us perform these songs. And then we begged my dad to let us sing in the church. Uh -huh. And that's kind of what started the ball rolling. Wow. Okay. We called it the Ross Girls, and and how many? How many? These are your sisters. Those are my two younger sisters, okay. Adrian and Sarah. I have okay. five siblings total. It'd be Shane, Sean, Ursi, me, Adrian, and Sarah. Okay. And it was me, Adrian, and Sarah. And where are you in the in the mix? I'm dead in the middle. I'm right in the middle. <laughs> that's great. I'm right in the middle. I think they usually say the middle child is kind of the most soulful and uh, most well adjusted. <laughs> My parents are probably beg to differ, but <laughs> you could say that. Yes. You could say that. Do any of my other siblings perform or anything like that? No. Interesting. Okay, and so how did you go from that to playing in bands and performing around town and all these things? So from singing in the church, um, I did a talent show in Glorieta, New Mexico at the Peer Educators Conference back in the early 90s. And I won. Well, I didn't necessarily, well, yeah, I won because I ended up being like the Did president anyone video that? Is, that? is that out there? Can oh, anyone see that? Oh, no, that is way, way before. Before people are popping before their videos iPhones and stuff up. like that. That uh, would be great if somebody I did. It would be incredible. Maybe someone did. Someone had their big camcorder. Doing yeah. like a solo thing. Yeah. Because after that, my younger sister's just like, we're good. We're not singing anymore. <laughs> but so since about 16, I've been doing it. I got up here in 2012. I had a gig to do the national anthem for the, what is it called? The New Mexico State Fair. Uh, um, yeah. I think the Rodeo Queen pageant. Okay, wow. That's what I, wow. and from there, I got another gig. And then from that gig, I got another gig. And it got to the point where I couldn't go back to the city. I couldn't leave. Wow. And then I did um, backup for a lady named uh, Sid Schmier, and that's where I met Eric Owens. Shout out Eric. And he introduced me to my Pink Floyd and my LCB band, which uh -huh. is Tony Arant and yes. Lauren Kalanka. Yes, yes, so yes. It was, Incredibly and through talented them fellows. Blossomed all the rest. And like I said, I went to one show, and from that show I got another band. From mm -hmm. that show I got another band. So. And so now, we were talking a little earlier, who are you playing with now? Because you are playing with uh, several okay. uh, groups. So the list goes Pink Floyd, LCB, Start Making Sense, Groove Time, The Rockomatics. There's one more. I just can't think of the it. Best so we'll, 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 we'll the best one. We'll put it on there. Right. We'll right. edit it in It'll come to me. But yeah. it's... So, it's and so just oh, by, yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah. My new band, yes. which is Smooth, my yes. Santana tribute band. That's Best number six. Yes. 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 Okay. Yes. See, they get that special uh, platform. Now, right. we can just say how challenging just to remember the names. Now, you would, how, <laughs> right. how many songs 
are you playing, are on your list that you go through with Total, all these bands? It's about 700. 700. Now, how, how do you balance this? I mean, from uh, one band to the next, um, is, it, is it awesome? Is it overwhelming? Is it stressful? Is it just come it's, naturally? It's, a, it's an amazing challenge to be able to do as many different genres of music as I do. And um, it keeps keeps music fresh, it keeps it alive, because like I was saying earlier, there's, it could be the same song, but three bands will do it differently. Yeah. So yeah. I make sure that I take really good notes, yeah. and yeah. I And just about the, the logistics of, of just time management. I mean, I'm just thinking, oh, yes. I've been in a band, you know, and then that's not <laughs> easy. So um, how, just the logistics, yes. I mean, you must be incredibly organized, I mean. Oh yes, I keep I, I keep a very very well documented schedule, and I I follow it to a T. And I don't schedule anything without it. If you yes. don't, if I tell you, yeah, I'll be there, I'll be there, and you yeah. don't see my scheduler in my hand, yeah. I'm not going. Yeah. Or I'm, I'm, <laughs> okay, it's, I, it's, it's not good. To, I have you have to yeah. see my schedule yeah. in my hand. Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, well, uh, you're going to sing for us. Uh, I'm so excited for that. I wonder if you could tell us a little bit about um, what, you're, what you're going to sing. So today I'm singing Ashes. It is a song um, by Celine Dion. And mm -hmm. we discovered this song, me and my boys, in watching the movie Deadpool. Mm -hmm. It is the Deadpool theme song. Uh, we've, I've been a huge fan of Celine Dion for years. And so her singing this song, and it's a beautiful song. I love it. And I love okay. singing it. Okay, well I can't I can't wait to hear it. Awesome. All right, well let's let's get to the song and then we're gonna talk some more. Great. All right.
can beauty come out and shed. Wow. <laughs> Um, Thank you. I'm a little misty. The other folks in the <laughs> in the studio, as you, you can tell, uh, were affected good. by your performance. Good. Um, Hopefully in a good way. In a very powerfully beautiful way. Um, what, what's that like? I can only imagine what it was like for me to be in the same room hearing that. What is it like for you night after night? And I know crowds are different. What they give back to you is different. but. Um, what, what's that like? Because you, you must be able to feel the effect you have. Um, it's, yes. it's, it's, it's kind of like a superpower, which is what music <laughs> is. But how, how is that? What, right. What's that like for you? It's, it's uh, affirming in mm -hmm. the sense, as I said, my talent is completely genuine. It's out of nowhere. There's really nobody in my immediate family who has it. So I know that it is a godly gift. And yeah. so... Um, to know that the gift is serving its purpose. Yeah. No I mean, if, if you're, I, I'm, I'm not just, right. and, and it felt like I had like a, a therapy session or something like that. I feel, I feel like, I don't know, like it, right. it, it's, it's like medicine. It's really medicine. <laughs> right. And that's, to me, that's, that's what my purpose is, is no matter what song it is, that it's, mm -hmm. it's going to be that for mm -hmm. everybody. Yes. And, um, do you, can you recall, I know you said Celine Dion, for, do you, I imagine, when you were hearing her, when she first really inspired you, is that kind of what you got oh, man, from her? Oh, yes. She has a song called Think Twice, and oh, it just blew me away. Oh, it blew me away. Um, Patty and you ever think, how, you're like, how is way? this just a voice, but it's affecting me? Like yeah, uh -huh. yeah, because it, it's, you, and I always tell people, you can tell if I really like a song. Yeah. You can really yeah, tell. Yeah, yeah. The, and a lot of people are like, I can't tell. This is how it sounds like it. My job is really to make you believe that every single song I'm singing is my favorite song. But yeah. you can, you can yeah. really tell when an yeah. artist is really passionate yes. about a song. Yes. And I, I um, feel like a lot of Patti LaBelle songs are like that. Celine, definitely. Yeah. CC Winans was another one. Yes. Yeah, just. I hope Celine Dion hears this. Uh, if she, <laughs> she would be, I, I think she would I, be I so thoroughly so. honored and just touched. And, I hope uh, so. Good. Yes, yes. Thank you. So, Celine, Celine if you're watching, I yes. hope you approve. Thank you. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, something else I'm part of performing and singing is the actual singing, but with bands, there's a lot of personalities, a lot of other technical yep. things. So you can't just be a talented singer. You have to, I know, have a lot of personal communication skills. Good people skills. Yeah, so how, how is that for you? Is it challenging or what have you learned? Or No, I think um, once, once you, you, you get around a bunch of people who, are, who love the same thing, which is music, yeah. and they love playing, and once, the, um, once you get the, the, the gel, once it starts meshing and mm -hmm. then the... Yeah, you just you just learn to work around certain things. Of course, there's yeah. always going to be a little bit of discrepancies, but yeah. at the end of the day, most of my bands, their music is still more important than yes. everything. So yes, yes. that's kind of I so think you why spoke it to works. So the music is the the music the epitome is of it all. right, and okay. they each each band, be it Smooth, be it Freud, be it uh, LCB, they they love playing they still love doing it yeah. and that i think is really key yes yeah so many people know you and have seen you and heard you i know but i bet most people don't know what is rachel doing when she is not on stage <laughs> well, can you give us a little glimpse in, into your life into who, who is the rachel that's not on the stage because that's you know probably a good part of your life as well that yes i'm always so interested what, what's this person like what what does she do so when I am not on stage, I am being a mother to two boys. Um, I uh, don't talk a lot. <laughs> I inspect Airbnbs, and um, I'm doing a little bit of reception work for About Face Med Spa on Louisiana. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but for the most part, that's I'm quiet, and I, 
Do you have like what, uh, some hobbies outside of music? I mean, I imagine you must be having to study uh, <laughs> notes and lyrics. I mean, do you have time right. for other things? I, I, do, I do have to constantly be, you'll constantly list, see me listening to music, but it's mostly me rehearsing. Yeah. But um, we, uh, me and my boys are movie fanatics. Mm -hmm. Marvel is our life. Yeah. But um, yeah, I'm kind of a homebody. I stay home. I, I try to, when I, if you do see me out and I'm not gigging, I'm yeah. out supporting other live artists. Yeah. And, that's, yeah. and that's something I, you, I see you always promoting other people's shows. You promote my shows and that's, yes. you're such a humble person oh, and uh, thank giving. You. So thank you. Uh, but yeah, it's quality. a community effort, if you will. So yes. Yes. that's, but that's, yeah, I try to, if I'm not singing, I'm, I'm chilling. Yes. <laughs> so um, any, not necessarily, it could be advice about music, but just any like life wisdom, words of wisdom, maybe someone has shared with you that you found is something that's helped you, you get through hard times Ooh. or conquer challenges or just get by day to day. Um, not to just put you on the spot, but any, anything that you can share that's kind of helps you, keeps, keeps you Ooh, okay. going. Breathe. 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 And um, think before you speak. That is probably the biggest lesson that I've had to learn um, is to breathe and uh, count to five and then speak because thinking with the hot head can cause way more problems than necessary. Yes. yes. So, yeah, yes. breathe. That's powerful uh, advice because oftentimes when you don't do that, you're not really communicating. You, you don't say right. what you mean to say. Okay, so breathe. Think before you speak. Yes, and uh, if you decide you want to be a singer, shut up. If you want to be a singer, <laughs> shut up. I like, I like that's, that's the best advice I have ever gotten is stay as quiet as you can. I know an opera singer, if she's not getting paid, yeah. she doesn't say anything. Yes. Ever. So, shh. Okay, I like that. This power of silence. Yes. And um, you, so many people, I think, would think like, wow, th what, what a dream life, you know, to be performing, know, right? to be able to, not just doing what you love, but to know it's being received and uh, appreciated. Yes. Um, are there some things, you know, dreams or other certain specific goals or thought, you know, even in the, the craziest thing, um, what's something that would be kind of like a fantasy to oh, come true? Right. That like, you know, this would just be the coolest thing if this could, could All be. All my bands, one big show. Wow. Right? Wow. Right? Or just all the musicians that I know. Mm -hmm. You on there. Mm -hmm. Joel. On there. Yeah. Just, just one big. Yeah. Rachel Extravaganza, but it's well, that, a multitude that must of musicians. I think that's just yeah. a matter of time before that. I think I, I'm sure everyone who knows you would be honored to be uh, ready to go. Part of right? That. Yeah. It would have. To, I feel like it would probably have to at least be a two, three day festival just to get everybody in there. And do you have an idea if it could be anywhere in the world? I mean, probably a lot of them are in New Mexico. But if do you have a a venue? Uh, some place that you're like one day I would really maybe some place that you've never played that you th thought I oh, one day I would really like to perform here. I love the, and I don't even know if they call it. Um, I just keep calling it the pavilion because it's the pavilion, yeah. but it's the outside theater, uh -huh. um, amphitheater. Because I my favorite spot is the lawn. Yeah, and it it's just a cool venue. Uh -huh. with the big old guitar as the entrance. Yes. I just yeah. That sounds like a great spot to be on. Yeah. Have some folks enjoying from the lawn there. Right. Looking up at you. Right. And it's big. It's out. It's outside. So. Okay. So you kind of, because New Mexico is annoying as it is. It's amazingly beautiful. It is. I the more and the more times I leave, the more appreciation. It's the best place to come back to. Right. It's like, ah. Yeah. So. Um, before uh, we go, I wonder if you could tell us what are some upcoming things you are uh, shows or things you're excited about, and we'll Goodness, and we'll of yes. course we'll of course po post some links and. Uh, so let's see. On this Sunday at four o'clock, Groove Time will be at Nexus Blue Smokehouse that is on Broadway and uh, Cesar Chavez. Mm -hmm. That starts at four this Sunday, May tenth. 
will be Freud's talking head, and that is a Pink Floyd and uh, talking, talking Heads yeah. tribute mm -hmm. uh, show starting at 7.30 at the Lobo Theater. And then I know that I'm with, uh, I believe, the rock uh the first Friday of next month at 9 o'clock at the Dragonhorn. Okay, well... We'll, when we post this, and, and you can see on the screen there, scan your phones on there. You get all the future updates and right. comings. I also have to say one more. I will be with the Smooth Tribute Band uh, May 4th in Española. Okay, okay, there it is. <laughs> there, they get extra special treatment now. Right. Okay. Well, uh, we'll definitely post those links. And, awesome. Um, I just, it's an honor to have you here. And it's just inspiring when there's someone who is so full of, talent and God's gifts, yet is so generous and humble. And oh, thank you. Uh, so you inspire many people, myself included. And I just wish you all the best, uh, continued success, joy, peace, and just continue letting your gift uh, make the world a better place. Oh, thank you. And I want to say that I am glad that you were back. Thank you. I look forward to seeing you pretty soon as well. And I'm glad. And thank you for having me. You this is it. awesome. All right. Rachel Ross, you thank are you. a gift and uh, look forward to seeing and hearing you many more times. Great. Thank you. All right. in the jungle all right Joel Grieshopper this is a man of many skills of many talents of <laughs> many gifts and just a heck of a great guy to be around uh, first off uh, how are you doing today how's I'm your day going well. how's it I'm doing well I mean it started out great uh, got invited to be interviewed uh, with Seth Hoffman what could be better yeah. Hey, I, you, you go on, go on. Now that is, I'm, I am truly honored to, uh, to, to know you and to have you on the show. And when I think of all the things that you do, I mean, we'll, and we're going to get into it, I'm just thinking, uh, what a rich life. And you do it with such a, a wonderful attitude. Um, I want, what, tell us a little bit about how would you, uh, you know, I, I know you as a drummer and this, but if someone says, so Joel, what do you do? How, how, how do you present that? Because there are so many things to say. I like to fix things. Okay. Which got me into the business I started in 88. So let's start, let's start with that. So he's an amazing musician. We're going to get to that. But let's hear, let's hear about the, the day job. The day job. Because yeah. many people probably say, oh, I recognize this guy. He's fixed uh, this for me. You know, you mentioned that, but I've been on airplanes flying out of Albuquerque back in and People look at me and I look at them, they seem familiar and you usually find out they've been a customer in my shop. Uh, probably had one out of every 10 people in Albuquerque through my shop. So tell us, tell us what shop is this for those it's, who don't, well, most of you know probably. Albuquerque but. Luggage and Zipper Repair started in 1988. To date, I've done somewhere over 250,000 repairs. Wow. Uh, different items, it could be a jacket, it could be a musical instrument case, it could be a tent, sleeping bag. Recycle these things. So, I mean, we talk about being green. I was green before green was cool. Right. It feels really good to be able to recycle things. Yes. And help people. And then you get to meet so many interesting people in my shop. So, there's that. Okay. And I now have my lovely wife helping me out because she retired. Yes. And I didn't want to because I love my shop. So now she's working with me, and uh, that helps us to be more efficient and take about a week, a month off. So yeah. we're traveling. So, yeah, so this, tell us about this new shift of lifestyle and schedule, how you do, how you work, and then you get to open up opportunities for other ventures. We want to travel. You know, for 36 years, I've done the shop and listened to people's stories of travel. So I've traveled virtually. Now it's our chance to travel um, real yeah. and in the three-dimensional world. So we got a van, a cargo van, back in 2017 and built it out into an RV. We traveled all over the state. In 2020, during the pandemic, yes. we 
couldn't leave the state or you'd have to quarantine uh, two okay. weeks, come back in. Yeah. So we said, well, let's make some lemonade out of lemons. So yeah. we went and traveled all around the state, all four corners to various BLM land and, and remote camped, watched the stars from amazing dark sky spaces at night and lots of hiking. And then when the state parks opened up, we could travel to some of these state parks. So we did that. A lot of traveling there and and uh, were you as a, a younger boy were you a traveler or something later in life you thought okay i haven't done this now i want to or have you uh, more later okay later in life i mean once again i've heard so much about the world in my shop i have a globe hanging <clears throat> and when people come in they tell me about the different parts of the world they've yeah. been to yeah. or where they're from sure. and where they're going and so we, yeah we just look at the globe and spin it and look different places and, and, now, we'll, and we'll make sure to put a link of where the shop is for those who haven't been there so they can be sure to go there and point out on the globe where they've been or want to go yes we we're now in Knob Hill we've been yes. members of the East Knob Hill community for about 10 years uh, 26 years before that on San Mateo and uh, the gorilla statue is still out front yes yes wow okay so um, and so tell us a little bit um wh where are you from originally where does the story uh, of Joel begin? <laughs> well, I was born in New Jersey okay, and uh, eventually graduated from Rutgers University in 84 and I just had this desire. Studying and what was your uh, area uh, of uh, study? Business management. Okay, okay, uh, served you. Wanted to major in music but uh, I did get to study with the Rutgers jazz professors, an amazing opportunity there. Mm -hmm. And uh, in 84 I decided that I would go west young man and I ended up in Albuquerque in 85. Okay and um, did you know as soon as you got here did you know this is where you're gonna stay or was this no just idea. a stop that just started? No it was a stop in the road. Wow. It was uh, yeah it was just a signpost in, in the road and be here for a while and then move on and it turned out to be really my point of fortune you know spiritually um, physically being able to hike the mountains and ski and kayak the rivers and fly paragliding in New Mexico and it's just a wonderful place it's yes. a wonderful place and then and then I think the richness comes first in here mm -hmm. and then afterwards you know it manifests if you want yes and materially so yes, I have yes. it all I'm very lucky yes well it's a, a special man to be lucky but it's an even more special man to recognize <laughs> that he's lucky and fortunate because many people true. are lucky but don't know it and so to have that and to appreciate it is a, is the true gift, is a real special gift. Mm -hmm. And um, I know as someone who's played music with you, you are a, a gift to be around, but also you are very your your talents. You. I wonder if you, you could tell us a little bit about your musical journey and uh, yeah. some of your highlights and uh, very interesting some things you'd like to share about that. So yeah, I started playing violin in fifth grade. That didn't stick. I got, you know, made fun of bringing the violin home and did that for about a year. Then um, one day in middle school, I saw the marching band came into from high school into the room and I was taken with the, the authority of the drums. I just liked the drums. And yeah. so when I was 14, I started to take drum lessons in 1968. My first gig actually was a bat mitzvah. Is that right? And I made $25. That was like a lot of money back then. I'm wow, like, you know, how about that? This is it. This is it. I love it. Mazal this. tov. So then from there, uh, I did a lot of bands up and down the East Coast, um, top 40 bands, stuff like that. Okay. It wasn't until I came out to Albuquerque in 85 that I started playing country music. Yes. So country music, that was about a 25-year stint with maybe 10 or 12 different major bands here in Albuquerque, Quarter Moon, uh, Whiskey River, Secondhand Rose, wow. lots of country bands. And uh, then uh, uh, I'm currently in about three different bands. Yes. One of them in the past was a great band called Temporary Tattoos, uh -oh. which went from 2013 yes. to 2018. Okay, I'll have to an amazing singer-songwriter named Seth Hoffman. Ah, I'll have to Google that. And, Google and that. Yeah. yep, and then he uh, he decided to move to Haifa. So 
that band took a break. And yes. We're hoping maybe that band might yes. get maybe back we'll, to Maybe we'll come on the show. Maybe the whole band will be, be on the show. That'd be fantastic. That'd be great. So, yeah. Well, speaking of music, I we started off with this instrument. What can you tell us about this uh, cool thing we've got up here? What's it called? Where'd you get it? What does it do? This is sort of a facsimile of an Aztec ceremonial drum. And it's also known as a tongue drum because it's got several different tongues on it, uh, tongues of wood. Uh, I think there's six of them. And uh, some of them are in tune, some are not. But this is made by a great friend of mine, uh, Dave Stetler. And he's based down in Truth or Consequences. Mm -hmm. And he makes everything wooden. He makes wooden kayaks, so boats, bowls, drums. He's a very creative guy. He's 91, and he's still going. Wow, incredible. So he's the, the maker of this. He's made several of them. He also makes cajones, and I've used cajones on gigs. Yeah. yeah. Can you, uh, can you uh, give us a, we, we heard a little bit. Can we hear yeah. just what a little Joel the Grasshopper improv <laughs> sounds like? That's my nickname, Grasshopper, yeah. right? Grasshopper. So, yeah, so here's, here's just a little idea of uh, something. Um, It's more rhythmic. And yeah, you yeah. get sounds out of the side of it. Can you, can you lift it up just so in the camera people can see what those yeah, tongues are? So look these like. are the six tongues. Uh -huh. Again, this drum made by Dave Stetler. I think it's got a date. He made this in December of 2003. Beautiful. Okay. And this is a one of one of many. How how many bits of percussion toys would you imagine? You've got. I've got a lot. <laughs> drum sets, which is my main instrument. I play the drum kit. Um, I think I've got four sets right now. Wow. And I want to build. And I know you've got a piano. I've got a grand piano in the living room. Yes. Um, yes. So lots. So you're surrounded by music. Yes. Yes. Something I would like you to talk a little bit is one of your other hobbies, which you take to the sky. Oh, thank you. Can yes. you uh, tell us a little bit about? that how you got into that and what that's like one day when i lived in los lunas i was driving home ready to exit at 203 off i-25 south and i look to the west and i see these curved wings flying and the little dot underneath it was a person and they're sitting in a harness with a motor on their back a big fan that's 48 inch prop i said i need to check that out because I love flying. <clears throat> so I went there and I ended up taking the course, a uh, two week course to learn how to fly uh, middle of October 2002. And I did my solo flight October 30th. 2002. It's, this is so, so this is you're, you're sitting like on a chair. Are you sitting or you're not sitting? You well, just have something in your back? You when know. I first learned, you yeah. have the motor. It's, it's, a, it's like a backpack strapped on you with a big cage behind you. Like a big fan. Kind a big of fan. It's like yeah. a big fan. It's a pusher prop. So you have in one hand your throttle, and then your toggles are here left and right, which you steer with. So you bring the wing up into the wind and start basically moving forward with a little bit of breeze. The wing inflates. You bring it up and then start walking or running, depending on how there's no wind you need to run yeah and then power up the motor once the wing is overhead and basically you start getting lift and when you power up the motor it basically creates an attitude where you pendulum once you're off the ground and you start to climb wow. so you can fly low and slow like 10 feet 50 feet or have been up and there's like a kind of like a parachute type thing above you or what's what's keeping you it's aloft similar but it's called a paraglider because okay. it's, so an it's air like a wing a wing thing. it's uh -huh. it's literally a wing it's curved it's got cells that are about this high which go from front to back and fill with air okay and then you have an array of lines that come up to it wow and the lines come down into what's called a, a, a riser and then the risers are here and the riser hooks into your harness. Okay, and do you have, is there, I wonder if we can uh, 
Maybe we can put in some video of that or something to right. see what that Maybe actually is got like. Got a couple pictures there. And um, so anyone who would do this, they might think there might be a natural bit of fear maybe, healthy bit of fear. Does that enter your mind at all or is that part of the excitement? Yes. No, the fear is there when I did my first solo flight because you're wondering, is this thing going to really lift me off the ground? Right, like what's the worst that could happen? You're like, ooh, I don't know if I should go there. Like, <laughs> <laughs> And then there's a motor behind you which is spinning at the outward tip of the props. It's spinning at 500 miles per hour. Wow. So when you spool up, you feel this power pushing you. You feel the torque and the torque's actually kind of twisting you, so you have to compensate for that while you're running forwards. There's a lot of things going on, but there's also definitely euphoria yes. in this. Because you mean, have to kind of let go. You're like, all right, I'm yes. alive here. You I have am. to let you're go, in the you moment. have to trust. So that's one of the things that I learned. It was really a spiritual experience for me. There's a book called Running Into the Sky, and it talks about flying. This, this way of the paraglider. It's called powered paragliding mm -hmm. with the motor. Okay. But then I also learned with my brother Jack mm -hmm. in San Diego to fly without the motor. Ah, and that's okay. called free flight. Okay. So basically there you're walking to the edge of a cliff, say mm -hmm. in Torrey Pines, yeah. and then uh, you get lift before you even, people say, do you really jump off that cliff? No, you don't need to jump off, only crazy people do that. <laughs> But you get to the end of the cliff before you're even at the edge. You feel it lifting. It's lifting you. Yes. And you blow your whistle to let people know, and you take off, and then you ride the ridge lift because there's wind coming in at that site from the Pacific, and when it hits the ridge, it glances upward. And so you're catching that ridge lift and flying wow. along. So, I imagine it must be a quite exhilarating it is feeling it is great well i wonder um sometimes i'm always interested in stories of people from like their childhood certain things that uh affected them later it maybe is some story that maybe seemed insignificant but can you recall just i don't know a story maybe something with your brother or something that i don't know, just is a memorable thing that kind of made you who you are or just just something that that stands out as a memory that, that would help us to get to know you more well i used to go to the local airport in somerville new jersey and i would watch the planes take off and i think from that point i knew i had a love of flight okay so from a young age you were in, you were in, in always in interested i was a teenager then yeah i used to ride my bike down to the airport and just watch the planes fly and think, how does it do that you know uh -huh. and then learning more about the physics of it and it i was 48 when i finally got to actually right? okay. fly the paraglider 2002 uh -huh. and then when i went to san diego to learn in 2005 without the motor i got to share that with my brother jack yeah so that was a, a pretty memorable occasion wow. Wow. so well um i wonder if you can share with us I mean, I'm a, I admire you for so many things you do, but I think the thing that I admire and appreciate about you the most is just the attitude which you come to things with, uh, mm -hmm. your excitement, your positivity, your openness. Uh, I've seen you many times meet people for the first time, and you, you, you have a genuine interest in, in, in people. And um, I just wonder, what, how, any advice or just how... how, how uh, words of wisdom of how were you always like that did you have that I sort think of so. open positivity to I you I think I was always what you call an extrovert mm -hmm. but yeah the shop has been a vehicle for that the ah, yes. luggage okay. and zipper repair shop just getting to meet all these people from different walks of life you know and seeing some people going on their first trip and some people coming who have an illness and they're going on their last trip wow. and just appreciating so much where they're going and what what their perspective is. So yeah. my advice is, you know, oid us, you know, yeah, listen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And try to take in and listen. You can learn from their perspective. You can, like I said earlier, travel virtually yeah. through their travels. Sure. I've learned so much from my customers. Yeah. It's so made, you're surrounded by teachers all the teachers, time. Teachers, teachers. Mm -hmm. They are my teachers. Uh -huh. uh, I've learned so much. Yeah. Wow. Well, I'm honored that uh, you have taken these opportunities in life to uh, 
uh, grow and then to, to share and to give back in, in, in so many of the ways that you do. Um, it's always a joy to be around you. Maybe we can uh, finish off with a little yeah. jam here. How does yeah. that sound? Let's do something in 12-8. I was hoping you'd is, say that. <laughs> <laughs> which is sort of... Uh, and uh, tell us, for those who don't know uh, anything about so music, or what does 12-8 what does mean? So there are eighth notes, okay. and there's 12 eighth notes in each measure. So if you're counting four, like one, two, three, four, you'd have one, two, three, two, two, three, three, two, three, four, two, three, which is kind of, I think, the basis of a lot of African music. Uh, like All right, well, let's do it. Let's Mo hear let's Mozambique. Let's, see, let's, see, let's hear how it sounds, and we'll kind of... Uh, Finish off the show with a little jam here. We'll just see what happens. All right, just breathe. Let, let the As Rachel said, just breathe. <sighs> yeah, and everything comes from that silence. Remember, as Miles Davis said, music is the silence between the notes. Love it. Here we go. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you, Joel. Thank it's a you, pleasure. Seth. And we'll put up some links of where you can find Joel playing and where his shop is so you can uh, have a nice chat with him. Yeah. And uh, all the best. Everyone's our teacher out there. We can learn a lot from everyone. I wish you all the best with all your joys, all your struggles. We are, uh, you're, whoever you are, uh, we love you, we cherish you, we value you, and all the best to you. Namaste. Namaste.